have talked about, we just went into Q function. We'll talk about this today, what occurs at those points. Um, but before we do that, we must discuss what is called concavity. When we talk about concavity, it is a characteristic on the graph on a specific interval. Does the graph open upwards or does it open downwards? Does it open upwards or does it open downwards? And we'll talk about that here in a second. It's a characteristic to the graph that determines do you open up upwards or open up downwards? And it's a curve. deal mainly with a curve here. And when we look at a curve, obviously when we have a line, we're not going to have any concavity. But when we look at a curve, the curve can either open upwards which would be a concave up. in all those. Basically, if you pour your Fruit Loops in onto that, will some of the Fruit Loops stick in that bowl? The other is a concave down. This would be your concave down. So when you pour your Fruit Loops into that bowl, they're just going to slide off the edge and they won't hold in the bowl. So you have to pick them up off the floor. So you have concave up and you have concave down. And it's a characteristic of the graph. And if we take a look at a graph, you know, graphs that we have sort of graphed here. Okay, as you take a look at a typical cube function, at a, on a typical cube function here, we are concave down on a specific interval. And at some point, at some point in this function or this graph, we change to concave up. Okay, we change at some point from down to up. Okay, up, down. Well, what we call that is we call this a point of inflection. Which I will simplify down to abbreviate down to POIs. It's that point where the graph changes from up to down. And if we take a look, somewhere in this area right here, we have a point of inflection. Because at some point, we have to go from concave down to Concave up. And that is at 
this point here in our domain. Because what we will have with this is we will have some value from the domain that will give us a point of the point of inflection. Now, where this occurs is where our second derivative is equal to zero. So if I'm trying to find, if I have a function and I look at the derivative equal to zero, this gives us critical points for our domain. If we set our second derivative equal to zero, these values in the domain will give us points of inflection. So if we take a look at a function, x cubed minus 3x minus 2, and we want to determine concavity and points of inflection. If we look at points of inflection, we have a function. We can take the derivative of this function. Which I'm hoping we are easily able to find that now. This would give us our critical points. We can look at our points of inflection by taking our second derivative, which would give us 6x. And what makes this value equal to 0? So we get an x value of 0 then, by dividing both sides by 6. We get a value of 0. Well, the question is, what, how do we determine concavity? Well, if we would click the clack into our calculator, x cubed minus 3x plus 2, If I would look at the graph of this, you can see when you have a cube function, typically you have, it's not always going to be, but the nature of the beast is typically you have one peak and one valley. And you can tell that you have in there concavity, bolt upwards and bolt downwards. But the question is, and we're saying at this x value of 0, we change from concave up to concave down. The question is, how do we determine is it concave up or concave down? Well, we can take a look at the second derivative. And on any interval or any value, we can determine what is the concavity at any value of the domain. And we can do that by using our second derivative. 
if I plug any value into our second derivative, and this value is greater than zero. We will be concave up. That's positive. Uh, if I would substitute any value into our second derivative of our domain, and we are less than the value of zero, we will be concave down. Now, if we take a look to the left of zero, we are pulled downwards. To the right zero, we're pulled upwards on our graph. Well, let's test that. Well, let's find our second derivative, and you can take any value to the left of negative or zero. So basically, you're doing the same thing you did with the first derivative test. This is where our second derivative is equal to zero. This is where we have equal to zero for our second derivative. We want a value to the left of zero. So if I would try negative one, negative two, negative three, does not matter. I'd have six times negative one, which would give us a negative value. Don't really care if it's positive or what, how big or small it is negative. We just know what we are negative. So when we are negative, we will be concave down. And if I would try my second derivative to the right of zero, any value to the right of zero, we would get a positive value here, which means we will be concave up. So if I'm looking at concave down on my interval, I would have x to the member of negative infinity to 0. Once again, we'll be opened at 0 because we're not concave down or up. That's a point of inflection. That's where we switch. That's like at the moment you cross the border from Ohio to Pennsylvania and you're standing right on the border. Got your legs like that. Are you in Ohio or are you in Pennsylvania? Neither. Okay, you're in both. Well, that's the idea of concavity. You're neither concave up or down. And then here we have x to the member of zero to positive infinity and beyond to be concave up. So if we would take a look at a function here, f of x equals x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 4. Find x, y intercepts, critical points, classifies local max mins, find points of inflection, and describe concavity on all intervals. Woo! There's a lot of stuff there. That's, once again, is your pertinent information, all your stuff. So we want to find our x-intercepts where y is equal to 0. Well, the only way of doing that, unless it's a function, uh, a factorable function, is by going through your calculator. So I would type in your y1, x the fourth, minus x, 8x squared.
get your graph down. And what we're looking for is we're looking for x-intercepts. Now, the nice thing about this is you have an even function, which means what you have on positive side, you'd also have on the negative side. So if you find two, you'll be able to find four. So we can go a second and calculate our zero values. So we have 0.73 is one of them. We go back to, okay, if we go to second, calculate option two, our left bound. So I just found this one, so I'm going to find this one over here. So I'm going to use my right arrow. Now we'll trace my graph, of my darn blinking spider. And I have to be to the left on my domain with my darn blinking spider and on my graph. Hit enter, then hit my right. Puts me up above it. So my zero is somewhere in between there. Hit enter. And we got 2.73. This being an even function, it'll mirror image on both sides of the y-axis. So we have uh, negative 0.73 and negative 2.73 also. Winer sets a little bit easier. X is equal to zero. Y is equal to four. Put zero in for X. Y is equal to four. Critical points occur where our first derivative is equal to zero. So we can take our derivative of our function. Or x cubed minus 16x. We can take out a 4x. So we're left with x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. We have x, x plus 2, x minus 2. So we have critical points at 0, 2, and negative 2. I put a value to the left of negative 2 in here, I get negative, 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 three negatives. You get negative, 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 which is a negative value here. Value between negative 2 and 0, we get negative, positive, negative which is positive here. Then we have positive, positive, negative, which is negative again. And 
And then we have three positives here, which is positive. Uh, let's see here. We have negative to positive. This will give us a minimum. Positive to negative. This will give us a max. And this will give us a min. If I take a look at a value of 0, we get 4 again. If I put 2 in here, we get 16. Minus 32, that's negative 16. Plus 4, we should get 12. For both of those. I'm sorry, negative 12, my bad. That's nice about what's happening, but put it in your calculator. You can find function values real easily. Um, points of inflection. So what makes our second derivative equal to zero? So if we take our second derivative, we have 12x squared minus 16. And to find our points of inflection, we set that equal to 0. So we can add our 16 to both sides. Divide by 12. which is 4 thirds, and we can square root 4 thirds, we need to make sure we get our plus or minus with that because we use square root to get our solution, so we have square root of 4 thirds which is what? One. 1.15. So if we look at concavity, if I would take a value to the left to negative 1.15, negative 2, negative 3, doesn't really matter. If I would put negative 3 in here, and it's negative, if I put negative 2 in here, I get positive 4 times 12, that's 48, minus 16. This is positive, so you're up here. If I would put a value of 0 in, I get 0 minus 16, which is negative. So we are down here. If I would put a value 2 in, I'd be back to up. So we had a positive and up. So looking at our graph, I guess one thing we should probably also find is our function value where our actual points of inflection are. If I would put 1.15 or negative 1.15 into our function, what's our y value? 4.83. Negative 4.83. Negative 4.83. So if we look at our graph, I need to go negative 2 to 2, 1.1, 2.73. We 
We have minimums at negative 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We have maximums at four. We're up at four. So if we start throwing in their information, we have 0 0.73, 2.75, 2.75, 0.73, and negative 2.73. We have minimums at negative 2 and 12, negative 12, and 2 and negative 12. We have a max of 0 and 4. We have points of inflection at 1.15 and negative 4.93, so this is negative 4, so we're almost a negative 5. So we have points of inflection there. From infinity to negative 1.15, we are concave up. Here's our points of inflection right here. So we will be concave up. Concave up. At this point right here, we will turn and go concave down all the way to our second point of inflection over there. So here we are concave down throughout that interval because we're down here. And then we will turn and go back to up again and at our other point. Once again, what we are throwing in is this point of inflection. We can also test for local max and minimums using what is called a second derivative test. When we look at the second derivative test, as we talked up here, if we put in any value in our domain into our second derivative and it's positive, you're concave up. Any value you put in there and it's negative will be concave down. Well, if you take a look at Local minimums. Local minimums. At any local minimum, you'll be concave up. So if you go into your second derivative and you put in a critical point, you put your critical point into the second derivative and it's greater than zero. You will be concave up, and it has to be a minimum. If you put in the second derivative and it's less than zero, this we talked about will be concave down, which means you'll have a maximum. So what you're able to do with this is, and you could do it either way, to determine if you have a local maximum or local minimum. You could do the first derivative test up here, which is fine. Or if you want to use the second derivative test, that is fine. But you have to do one.
to justify your solution, to justify as the local max of local min, you have to do one of these two tests. I leave that up to you. Sometimes it's easier to go into your second derivative and test in the second derivative. Sometimes it, to find the second derivative, it's a pain in the cushy. So I'm going to look at my first derivative test. Sometimes it's easier. This one's not difficult to find your second derivative. But if you had to sit there and run a product drawer or a quotient rule to find your second derivative, it's like, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll stick with the first derivative test. But if I have an easy exponential function, I can easily take the second derivative up. Okay, I can go right into the second derivative test. Then. So that is up to you. Okay, now the homework is on page 301, 302. We did these problems already. We did parts A and B. I said, don't worry about C. Now what I want you to do is 301, 302, do part C, which all now refers back to points of inflection. We will continue dealing with these graphs and characteristics of these graphs, um, looking at points of inflection, concavity, uh, very similar to what we did with the critical points, but we'll start dealing with that concavity. Uh, try to amp up the graphs a little bit more, maybe, in regards to getting a little bit more graphing in um, so we can get a good handle on our graphing of polynomial functions. This is why 